Hi there, welcome back. After the last video, which was basically circuit analysis, I'm actually quite pleased to get back to the nitty gritty of the restoration and show you how far I've got so far. What I've actually done is uh, the entire audio stage has been checked and replaced uh, and components replaced when necessary. Now, other than one or two resistors, and I believe uh, the one resistor was the one right in the beginning that I showed you. The rest were fine. And um, bear in mind, some of them you have to actually take out of circuit to measure. But I'm happy with their values. They're not too far off. And uh, other than that, all the film capacitors, the paper capacitors were replaced with film caps, as you can see. All the yellow ones there were replacements, as well as these orangey ones, brown ones. I sometimes use these, sometimes I use the yellow ones, depending on uh, the part of the circuit, really, and also depending on availability. What we've got here, we did, um, we had a look at how the, the circuit works on stereo, and I gave you basically an extrapolation of what will happen on mono. But um, I want to show you now what the actual result is. Now I've repaired the signal generator with a 1 kHz signal, 200 mV uh, RMS per channel. Both channels are active at the moment. This signal is coming into the uh, pickup input with one of these DIN uh, sockets and, and uh, cables that I happen to have lying around. And what I'm doing then is I'm, I've got the two scope probes to the grids, actually just before the grid resistors of the... Um, of the ELL80. So what we're measuring really is the drive to each uh, side of the amplifier stage. And this is the result. Pretty amazing. What we've got is a, well, the input is exactly the same. It's a one kilohertz sine wave. So what we've got is a reverse uh, situation where they're actually 180 degrees apart uh, going into the grids, which is what we want to see. Okay, now that's basically on stereo. Now what I can do, I can now um, actually make it mono because what I'm using here is the the two um, the two triode stages of the ECC eighty three are working. Uh, one side of them is then going through the triode of the EM eighty four, and what I want to see is how equal they are. Now they look pretty equal there, they look pretty exact, but I've got to admit there's a bit of a tr trick going on here. Whether they're exact or not really depends on what I do. I'm doing it on the other side. What do I do to the balance control? Now if I move the balance control one way, I get this, and if I move it, it's uh, slow to react, if I move it the other way, I get that, which is exactly what I expect. So in the middle, I should get them exact, which is what I've got here. Whether it's actually in the middle or not is, is questionable because I don't even have that thing properly calibrated. But um, I've got a perfect push-pull signal for the, um, for the base speaker section, base speaker transformer, and two equal and opposites for the the two left the you know the left and the right transformer now there's one thing that came up here and that is if i've got two opposite signals going to the left and right transformer i'm actually getting reverse phases with the audio coming out of the left and the right now that may be true but all that means is that uh, on the output on the secondary of that one transformer you can actually just wire the speaker the other way around so you reverse the phase again, depending on what the effect of the sound is. And I, th I haven't really uh, checked because it's difficult to check the so-called polarities of these transformers. They're not exactly the same because one's got an extra tapping, if you remember, for the electrostatic tweeter. But I think they're actually, uh, they actually have done that. The way they've wired the um, one of the output transformers is to take the secondary in reverse phase. So you get the same phase. So when the left speaker is pushing air out of the cabinet, as it were, the right speaker is doing the same thing. 
otherwise you basically get a nulling of the audio. But that's it on stereo and I'm happy with that. What I want to show you is now if I disconnect one of the channels, let's deactivate one of these. So we've now got one side only coming in. What we see on the oscilloscope is that the one channel is there it's in, in its entirety. Remember, this is a one kilohertz signal. And the other one's getting a very small amount of signal. Now, why is that? Well, the reason is, if you recall, those, uh, the right signal, call it the right signal for now, the yellow one, is actually going to the left to try and get all the base uh, frequencies in. So we've basically got some of that right signal being fed to the left channel. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decrease the frequency and we'll see what happens to that blue trace. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen, but I've got an idea. Let me change the time base. Now, what you're seeing here, let me change. Now we've got that at 100 hertz. And as you can see, the relative size of that blue trace has gone up compared to what it was before. And that makes sense because what this means is that the base component of the yellow trace is being properly fed to the right to the left channel, which is what we want. If you recall, you want all the base of each channel to basically sum and become a mono base signal for that push pull. And uh, they then come out as inverted on the uh, out of the driver tubes. So the logic seems to work here and we can actually determine what frequency that happens at uh, where, the, you know, where the cutoff frequency of that low pass filter is on each channel. But uh, it's a pretty useless experiment. But uh, this is it. We've got stereo activated and we have one of the stereo signals off. So it's actually just the one side we're looking at. Now I'm going to prepare it again still with one side only and I'm going to deactivate the stereo and there we go when I deactivate the stereo what we've got now is one signal only from the signal generator uh, this is a one kilohertz uh, 100 hertz signal because it's taking um, yeah it's taking the 100 hertz you can see that there and they are equal and opposite really and that's what you want to see. So the push-pull idea is working well. Now if I increase that frequency, it's dropping in amplitude. But I'm going to increase it further, back to one kilohertz. And there we've got it again. So this is uh, mono, one kilohertz signal, with the um, stereo deactivated. And I can activate it again, and we get the same situation as before. And that's mono. And there we go. Okay. Now at one kilohertz, we should be able to drop or increase the amplitude with the high button which is sort of working, not much effect there. However, this is, if I activate the VUN, now what have I activated there? There, I've got the VUN activated, and now I'm trying to do this blind, but yeah, VUN is activated. Now I'm gonna move the base. Base will have a little effect because it's affecting one kilohertz, which isn't really base. The treble should be more pronounced, but it's not really. But the VUN now, you see that's the part of the, um, that's the section, that's the second, or the third rather, the third equalizer knob has a pretty great effect because it's obviously where the one kilohertz lies. And this is the second one has less effect. So the VUN really brings into action those two middle ones. 
And now I've pushed orchestra or rather, I'm not sure which one that is. That's orchestra. So that's a preset and the other one's a preset and that's the VUN. So we see that working as well. Obviously the volume control just makes those bigger or smaller. There's the volume control. And I can actually get it to distort over there. And it's distorting on opposite sides of the wave. So this distortion, if we look at the distortion that's happening there, it actually tells us something else as well. Let me bring those down. Now remember, this is in this is in mono. And I'm going to increase the volume. And you see the distortion. It's happening more on the one side of the waveform and you're seeing the opposite effect. Now what that tells us is that this distortion is coming from the ECC83 triode. It seems that uh, if you look at the blue trace, the top section is clean and the bottom one is distorted. If you look at the yellow trace, it's the reverse. So that means that uh, the one causing the, the yellow trace is the uh, triode of the EM84 and the one creating the original signal is the triode of the ECC83. So that means that ECC83 is the one causing the distortion. And if I wanted to correct that, I'm not sure that I need to because it depends on what uh, volume levels that's working on. I'd have to look at that ECC83. I might even try and replace it and see if it's something to do with the, the tube that's gone weak. But yeah, that's our audio and it works pretty well. And the presum well, the assumptions that I that I made about how the uh, bass gets shifted to the other side has actually been seen here. So I'm pleased. I am very pleased. Now, if we look at our schematic, you can see that um, quite a fair amount has been done. This entire section, all the way back, all the audio, is completed. And now we focus on that point over there. Now that point over there is precisely where the signal comes, this one here, comes from the radio section. This is where the signal gets switched from the pickup input to the radio section. So that's what the audio that you're going to get coming through. And as you can see, the radio section hasn't been done. So that'll be the next step. And um, let me show you on the radio what that entails. If you recall, there's a fair amount of uh, work to be done here, but these are the, this is the ECC, ECH81. This is the first mixer and uh, first AF tube. The uh, FM is inside this can. I don't think I'm gonna mess with it because it seems to be working fine. We'll, we'll check that when we do the alignments and so on. But that's where I start working uh, on the AM, on the radio side, on the reception side. So there's a few caps to be replaced in there. A few more down here. You can see that there. That one's leaking badly. You see that on the end there? That thing there is really leaking. There are another two, the brownies, the brown caps, those two have to go. Here's a 150 nanofarad. I think that's actually the magic guy, uh, the AVC cap. Because the AVC seems to be working on very strong signals only. Um, in fact, it's the opposite. It's almost always fully uh, closed. So it's probably too sensitive, maybe. We'll see. So there are very, very few capacitors. In fact, if you look at it, the ones that need changing, you know, there's one, two, three, four, and then, you know, these five, six is about two that I can see there. There might be another one below. So there's, you know, six capacitors. There's not much. And when I do this checking, obviously, I've got to have a look at how the... Uh, ferret antenna fits into this whole thing because I'm not getting medium wave. I'm getting very poor medium wave and with that uh, magic whip that I, or mini whip, huh, 
mini whip antenna that I'm using now, I should get very good medium wave, and I'm not. However, I'm getting very good uh, long wave, which is practically the same circuit, so and short wave as well. So yeah, that's the next step. That's what I'll be going into. First thing, swap out these caps and then start checking coils because all you need, you need to check the continuity of these coils here. This, this is the uh, antenna coils and the uh, oscillator coils. Make sure that all the continuity that has to be there is there. That's pretty, it's a pretty laborious job because you sometimes can't really measure it um, properly you need to desolder one of those little hair wires and that's not advisable. You then have to play with switches because some of the switches short them out and the difference between a shorted coil and uh, an, a, a normal coil is a few ohms so you've got to be very careful that you don't misunderstand what you're doing there. I also need to make sure that those switches are all clean. It could be the medium wave switch uh, is not properly cleaned. So yeah, that's the next task, and um, that task is going to take a little while because I'm happy to announce that I'm going on holiday now. Um, so this is going to be on standby for about uh, a week to 10 days. And when I get back, that's what I'm getting started on, and then I'll report back to you. Thanks for watching. See you soon.